We're the creators of the AADL TV show, Recipe Share, now in its fourth season. And we have some exciting news. We've created a cookbook. Our cookbook is titled, Thanks for Sharing, which includes recipes by all three of us, some of which you may have heard here on the show, and some that we have yet to share. Our cookbook includes dozens of recipes ranging from breakfast to dinner with snacks, appetizers, and desserts too. These are all our original recipes created by us or passed down in our families. We're so happy that we get to share them with you. If you're interested in getting a free copy of our cookbook while supplies last, please email recipeshare at aadl.org with your name and the library you'd like to pick it up at. Thanks for Sharing is also available in Braille. Just let us know if you would like the Braille version. And feel free to email recipeshare at aadl.org if you have any questions. We hope you enjoy. Recipe share, recipe share. Share a little recipe with recipe share. Recipe share, recipe share. Share a little recipe with recipe share. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Twist on a Classic. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined today by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Beth, tell us what you made. Okay, my recipe was a twist on nachos, breakfast nachos. I got this recipe from uh, Simply Julia, Julia Tertian's um, 110 Easy Recipes for Healthy Comfort Food. And it's super simple. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I'm just going to make my own little plate of them. Um, but what I what I liked about it, it's, it's basically nachos, but you, um, you know, uh, scramble up some eggs and I just put it on a frying pan and laid it out. I'm going to show a picture of how I did the eggs. Um, otherwise, you know, it's just, then you just put your scrambled eggs, uh, kind of more like an omelet style, you know, uh, but uh, set those on top of your cheese covered nacho, you know, chips. Um, but the other the other thing is she she does and again this is something you can just you could add anything you want black beans sausage bacon um her method was uh chopped tomatoes little chopped avocado onion cilantro pickled jalapeno and lime juice and then set that aside with and then kosher salt on that and then uh just make your nachos Julia uh, puts hers in the broiler. My broiler's pain in the butt. Um, so I tend to just microwave my nachos. Um, yeah, and it was, boy, I, when, I, when I made them, I made them like four days in a row for myself. Um, I also used, as I sometimes do, the um, Ann Arbor Tortilla Company. Now this is where my husband disagreed that they, he said they were too hard. Mm. I thought they were just right. And I love that lime. Every time I think about making these, I just like my mouth waters because I just love that little tang that they give. So um, anyway, it was a simple recipe. I en actually ended up finding it again on Epicurious. So I have a link and the link picture is really more delightful than how mine turned out because I didn't use avocado um but it's super easy and I'm also a thing the way she describes this uh super simple dish is that it's like the perfect kind of thing where you have like a week group of friends hanging out you know with, after a, a party or uh, a weekend getaway or uh you know just family happen to be together for breakfast. I, I just, and I love, I love a savory breakfast. So mm -hmm. that's my recipe. Man, I wasn't that sure I was going to be into breakfast nachos until you were like, oh, but you put them on the Ann Arbor Tortilla Company lime chips. And I was like, sold, right? Like that sounds good. So yeah, with yeah. that little extra tang of lime with the eggs and everything, I could see really good. that being pretty tasty. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I 
um, so I have made that exact recipe, Beth, from Julia's cookbook. Oh, okay. Also on the chili lime Ann Arbor tortilla factory chips, because those are my uh, personal favorite. I think those chips hold up really well because the eggs are like a little heavy, right? So it's mm-hmm. kind of like, I felt like I needed that like heft in the chip. Um, super good. And I completely agree. I was like kind of sad. I didn't have people over when I made them because I imagined like making a whole tray and then having people just like, you know, grab a few to toss on a plate. I think it would be a really good one for like entertaining and like not a hard way to provide breakfast for a group. You know, you just have mm-hmm. to basically like scramble eggs. Um, yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because it reminded me I did this like over a year ago. Now I want to do it again. So <laughs> not bad for a tailgate kind of party. Totally. Totally. You know? Yum. Into that sort of thing. So, um, well, Katie, what did you end up making for the twist? All right. So my recipe is a caramel apple crumble foil packs. So these are, it's a twist on your classic um, apple crumble, but you put it in a foil pack, right? So um, there's several ways that you can cook this. You can put it in your oven, you can put it on your grill, but I was ultimately very interested in putting this on a campfire. Um, I did try it first in my oven to make sure that it worked before I did it on the campfire. Um, And it's wonderful. This is very, very easy. And I really liked it. So all you do is you just take two large pieces of foil and set them out on your counter. And then you're going to take your apples chopped up. She doesn't, oh, this is from averycooks.com and she does not peel her apples. I like apples peeled. So I peeled mine. I use gala apples. So those are smaller. Uh, So she used two medium apples. I ended up using four of the gala apples for this recipe, which serves four, but I would say serves two if you're real hungry um, and you're making two packs that serve four. So, you know, keeping that in mind, what you do is you make your apple layer first and it's just your apples, some butter, brown sugar, regular sugar, cornstarch, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and you mix that all together and you lay it out on your foil and then you make your crisp topping and that's just butter, brown sugar, old fashioned whole rolled oats, flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. You mix that all together in your bowl and then you um, just divide it up and pour it over top of your two apple piles. I've got a picture so you can see what that looks like here. And then you just fold it up and um, so you know, put it on your fire of choice or in your grill um, and pull it out when it's done. So it, like, 15 minutes in a 450 degree oven or like seven minutes on a hot campfire ended up being the way that it worked out for me. Um, you can take it out. It looks super lovely. And uh, the suggestion is that you serve it with caramel sauce, which I used store-bought both times I made it, but there is a ingredient that Avery cooks uh, or a recipe that Avery cooks includes in these ingredients. So I will put that in the link so you guys can see if you if you feel like making your own salted caramel sauce for this, you can. Um, I really didn't think it needed caramel sauce because it's very sweet as is. So for me, that actually wasn't even necessary. I didn't use it the second time I made it. Um, but this was just really wonderful with ice cream and whipped cream um, coming off fire. I've got a picture of it overtopped this beautiful uh, fire with coals and stuff. We made it really late at night, so I didn't get many other pictures than that. Um, But I would definitely suggest doing this. When I made it uh, for the campfire, we were up north, so I had made it here in Ann Arbor, put all my packets together and just put them in the cooler and didn't pull them out for a couple of days until we were ready. So uh, that was a wonderful way to transport dessert and not have to deal with it when I was in a cabin in the middle of nowhere. So I love this recipe and you guys should try it. <laughs> Sounds great. I was going to ask if you could, I thought it sounded so good while actually camping. I was going to ask if it transported well and still tasted, you know, as you had expected. And it, it sounds like it did. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that sounds really yummy. Can't yep. wait to uh, bring little kiddos camping for something like that. Oh, but yeah. It, but it, yeah, even yep. without that. Sounds that good. Was really good. What does the texture of the apples end up like? 
So it's they're soft. Okay. Um, and it does it end up tasting with the oats and everything in the topping very much like a crumble. I wouldn't say like a crisp because it doesn't get very crispy, but it's very soft texture to it. Cool. All right, Elizabeth, what's your twist? Okay, so this is interesting. My recipe's on my phone because it's from New York Times Cooking. So I have it on the app here. So <laughs> I don't know why I did this. I was thinking like twist on a classic and I just wasn't coming up with what classic I wanted to do. And now that I've heard both of yours, I'm like, oh, I could have done anything like <laughs> twist on pasta salad, twist on, anyway. I did a twist on a traditional Taiwanese recipe um, that I found in the New York Times cooking. This is called three cup chicken. And this intrigued me because it says, um, the intro says, ask 30 people how to make this traditional Taiwanese recipe and you will receive 30 different responses. So I think there's a lot of different um, like family ways to make it and like, you know, regional ways. Um, and anyway, so there's a, there's like a folk recipe and it says like debates rage, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, I used um, the recipe from the New York Times, which is a certain take on this like traditional recipe that's been around for forever. Um, okay, so it's called three cup chicken. Um, it's very easy. Uh, you have, um, you put three tablespoons of sesame oil in a, it calls for a wok. I don't have a wok. I just used a big skillet. Um, and then you add um, a two to three inch piece of ginger that you've sliced into coins. Um, 12 cloves of peeled garlic left whole. Um, four whole scallions that you've trimmed and then cut into one inch pieces and then um, some dried red pepper flakes. And you kind of let those, the aromatics cook, it smells really good for a few minutes. And then you have um, two pounds of chicken thighs that you've cut into bite-sized pieces. So you toss those in, um, let those cook for a few minutes, and then add um, a tablespoon of light brown sugar, half a cup of rice wine, a quarter cup of light soy sauce. And it kind of, um, you bring it to a simmer and then just let it, Simmer. It says it takes about 15 minutes for the sauce to start to thicken. Mine was not thickening at all. Uh, it was still like fully liquid. So I tossed in like a tablespoon of cornstarch because mm -hmm. I was just like, this is not happening. And that worked right away. And actually some of the comments on the recipe were like, I put in a tablespoon of cornstarch. So obviously I was not the only one who had that issue. Um, so then it comes together into this really beautiful sauce. Um, and you're supposed to serve it over rice, which I did, and then um, top it with um, a, a bunch of fresh Thai basil or regular basil. Um, so it looks really good. I have a picture, or sorry, it doesn't look very good. It's like sort of brown. I mean, it's just like a brown, like chicken, you know, it's not particularly colorful, but I have a picture here of it in the bowl over rice, but it was delicious. Um, the flavors were super, super good. Um, I have another picture here of it with the basil, but I wanted to show both because the basil kind of obscures mm -hmm. what it looks like. Um, it took not very long and it was so easy. Like the hardest part was peeling 12 cloves of garlic, honestly. Um, and um, my friend actually made it at the same time and they had some trouble with the sauce thickening as well and didn't have cornstarch. So they, they, they were a little bit sad about that. Um, so I would definitely recommend making sure you have cornstarch to help with that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was really good. I would make it again. Um, you know, maybe like I could see myself next time throwing in like maybe some cabbage or something just for a little more texture because there isn't a lot of crunch. It's pretty like soft by the time everything has cooked for so long and the rice is soft too. Um, or maybe serving it with like a side of like slaw or something. Um, but I, I liked it. And um, I think a lot of other people did too because it has 5,786 ratings and the rating is five stars. So so it's good. I would, uh, I would recommend it. And that's my, my twist on a Taiwanese classic. So. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. It sounds really, really good. And really simple. Like a, like something you can totally make for dinner. Total um, weeknight yeah. dinner for sure. For yeah. sure. So yeah. Love all that garlic. Yes. The garlic and the ginger and the sesame oil. And seriously, my stomach is growling. <laughs> like I, that sounds so good. I cannot wait to make it. Yeah. That's super awesome. easy. I would be interested in trying like it from a Taiwanese restaurant or something just to mm -hmm. see how yeah. other, other takes on it. Um, but you know, this was, it was good. So 
what is the name? Oh, you said three cup three chicken? cup chicken. Um, I think that comes from because the recipe, apparently the folk recipe, that's what the New York Times calls it, calls for making a sauce with a cup each of sesame oil, soy sauce, and rice wine, which <laughs> is a lot. So yeah, I you don't need that much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Three cup chicken. Sounds really yummy. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, if we have no other comments, I will take us out by saying thank you for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Make sure to join us next time on Recipe Share. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share, share a little recipe with Recipe Share.